In this video, I'll be using cellulose to make sirene. Sirene finds use as a non-toxic, renewable and biodegradable solvent. Toxic aproic dipolar solvents like DMF and NMP can fully be replaced by sirene in many applications. But sirene has only been around commercially for about two years, since the production of sirene is quite intensive. Recently, there have been developments in more efficient production methods of sirene, as well as increased demand for renewable solvents. This resulted in the opening of the first production plant in the world for sirene. But compared to DMF and NMP, the production of sirene is still relatively small, and sirene is very expensive. So let's see how it's made. To get started, I set up a beaker in which I have weighed out 250 grams of polyethylene glycol 4000. To this beaker, I add in a mixture of 4 grams of sulfuric acid in 90 mL of methanol. Now I mix it and try to spread it around as evenly as possible. When it has been mixed, I leave it for a while so that all of the methanol evaporates. And then I add 63 grams of cellulose powder. I add it in portions and mix it around so that all of the cellulose is spread evenly. When that is done, I set up a heating mantle and a large flask. I put in a large funnel and add in all of the mixture I just made. When it has all been added, I set it up for a vacuum distillation, with the receiving flask and the cold trap both being cooled by dry ice in acetone. Now I start by pulling a vacuum on the setup. Except, um, okay, I guess not. So my powder is a bit loose to be doing it like this, so I cleaned up the mess and started heating the flask a bit before I pulled the vacuum. Since the pack 4000 will melt at a relatively low temperature, it will hopefully hold it all together. When the pack begins to melt, I pull a vacuum and heat it to 190 C. At this point, the mixture begins to char and form mostly water, furfural, and levoglucosinone. Yellow liquid starts coming over, and I leave it running until nothing more comes over. What is happening is the acid catalyzed pyrolysis of cellulose. With the help of heat and acid, the cellulose will first form levoglucosin, which quickly reacts to form levoglucosinone. Since the conditions are quite harsh, the cellulose chars and also forms side products like furfural. When it is done, the whole flask and the distillation head are covered in black tar. I ran the reaction another time and combined both distillates, which are slightly different in color. Now I add 70 ml of ethyl acetate to the distillates. I drop in a stir bar and start stirring. I then add about 10 grams of sodium bicarbonate to neutralize any acids. I leave it to stir for a while and then move it all to a separatory funnel. I wait for the layers to separate and drain both the layers. I put the water layer back into the separatory funnel and extract it twice with some ethyl acetate. I then discard the water layer and combine the extracts with the original ethyl acetate layer. Now to remove any remaining water, I dry the mixture with anhydrous sodium sulfate. I then filter the mixture through some cotton to remove the solids. When that is done, I take the filtered mixture and set it up for a vacuum distillation to boil off all of the ethyl acetate. When that is done, I am left with an orange liquid. To this liquid, I add 10 ml of ethyl acetate. So as a clarification, from this shot on, I'm using the product that I acquired in a third run of the experiment. I tested vacuum fractional distillation on the previous two distillates, but this method didn't work for me in separating the components. So to separate the remaining furfural and levoglucosinone, I will have to do column chromatography. For this, I will use spherical silica gel. So I set up a beaker and weigh out 200 grams of the silica gel. Now I set up another beaker to prepare the eluent for this column. So I add in 500 ml of hexanes and 50 ml of ethyl acetate, which will be a mixture of 10 to 1 hexanes to ethyl acetate. To the silica gel, I add in enough of the eluent so that all the silica gel gets wet and it becomes a slurry. I add the slurry with a funnel into a large column and allow the eluent to run through so that the silica gel becomes packed. When the silica gel no longer moves, it is packed and I can start adding a layer of sand on top to protect the silica. When the layer of sand has been added, I add some eluent to remove any remaining sand from the sides and let the solvent level go into the sand. I then close the stopcock and add in all of my product along the sides of the glass. Now I open it again and let all of the product go into the silica. When that happens, I can add more eluent on top without disturbing the separation. So I leave the column running and first collect many fractions which don't contain anything. 
so I reuse them as eluent. Then after about 2 liters of eluent had come through, I let the solvent level go into the sand again and swap the eluent for 5 to 1 hexanes to ethyl acetate. Around this point, the first compound also started eluding off the column, which was furfural. I collected many fractions, and when all of the furfural had come through, I again swapped the eluent, but now for 1 to 1 hexanes to ethyl acetate. Increasing the amount of ethyl acetate in the eluent will force off components that still remain in the column faster. Since I know that all of the furfural has come through already, and my next component should be level glucosinone, I can safely increase the polarity without risking messing up the separation. When all of that is done, I combined all the furfural containing fractions and the level glucosinone containing fractions. Now I simply have to boil off all of the solvent, so I set it up for a short path vacuum distillation. When all of the solvent is gone, I am left with a bit of yellow liquid, which I transfer to a smaller flask with a pipette. I also wash the flask twice with some ethyl acetate, and the yield of level glucosinone turned out to be 1.75 grams. Now that I have some level glucosinone dissolved in ethyl acetate, I can move on to the next step and make the sirene. Now I have to perform a selective hydrogenation to only hydrogenate the double bond and not touch the ketone. The solvent for this hydrogenation is ethyl acetate, which is already in here. So I move the flask to a heating mantle and attach the gas adapter, a two-way gas adapter and a funnel. I then attach an argon line and flush the flask with argon. Under argon flow, I add in 210 mg of 10% palladium on carbon which will be the catalyst for this reaction. I then remove the funnel and replace it with a stopper. I also remove the gas adapter and also replace it with a stopper. Now to the two-way gas adapter, on the right I add a hose which is connected to a vacuum pump. On top I add another hose. To this hose I can simply attach a balloon of a gas that I want to use. For the first step I attach a balloon filled with argon. Now that the setup is complete, I can start removing the air and replacing it with argon. Since palladium on carbon can ignite at room temperature in the presence of oxygen and hydrogen, I first want to remove all of the oxygen. So I open the way to the vacuum pump and remove all of the air from the setup. Then I close it off and there is now a slight vacuum in the setup. So now I can open the way to the balloon which will cause the pressure in the balloon and the setup to equalize. So the argon from the balloon will quickly rush into the setup and fill the atmosphere inside. This process is one purging cycle and is done three times to make sure all of the oxygen has been removed. When that is done, I can move on with the next step. I remove the argon balloon and then attach a new balloon filled with hydrogen. In the same manner as before, I now want to replace all of the argon with hydrogen. So I repeat the same process as before. When that is done, I keep the way to the hydrogen balloon open so that the reaction can also consume hydrogen directly from the balloon. Since the amount is quite little, one balloon contains more than enough hydrogen to complete the reaction. In short, during this reaction the palladium particles that are loaded onto the carbon will adsorb hydrogen onto its surface. Level glucosinone has a double bond that is susceptible to hydrogenation, since it can also attach to the surface of the palladium and pick up a nearby adsorbed hydrogen, which will turn its double bond into a single bond. I leave it running at 30C for about one day, and when I come back it looks pretty much the same, and the balloon has almost completely deflated. Now I remove the hydrogen balloon and replace it with an argon balloon. I repeat the same process as before and replace the hydrogen atmosphere with argon, so that it won't ignite in air. When that is done, I remove the hoses and take off the adapter. To get out the palladium on carbon, I filter the mixture through some cotton and sea light. When that is done, I am left with a clear solution, which I set up for a short path vacuum distillation, to boil off all of the ethyl acetate. After it is all gone, I am left with a clear liquid. We can see that the hydrogenation process has pretty much removed most of the yellow color. Since pure sirene is a clear liquid, and level glucosinone is yellow, this is expected though sometimes sarine can still be a little bit yellow. This liquid is also still a little bit discolored and has some cloudiness to it. I tested it with TLC and the product is mostly sirene, but there is still some level glucosinone left. But unfortunately, I have no way of testing its purity exactly. The cloudiness can also be from some water that was present in the ethyl acetate, or perhaps some ethyl acetate itself. Anyhow, the yield of the product turned out to be 1.8 grams, which is pretty much quantitative, though its purity is unknown. In the third run of this experiment, I had a little trouble during the vacuum distillation at getting all of the level glucosinone out of the reaction mixture, which likely reduced the yield a lot. Still, even if all went according to the procedure, there would only be about 7 mils of sirene, so it is quite a lot of effort and cellulose to make this solvent, which is also why it has only been of interest since recently, after the production techniques have been improved. 
this kind of process is more suitable for large scales, where a lot of cellulose can be processed at once. Right now the solvent is still very expensive, since there is also only one company that produces it. But this might change in the future with increased capacity and optimized processes. So that was it for this video, make sure to comment your thoughts down below. And with that I would like to thank you for watching, and as always a special thanks to all my patrons. See you in the next one.